Mitchell Trubisky. One of, if not the most controversial players in all of the NFL. Now you look at the Mitchell Trubisky timeline. We see the Bears. They traded up their third draft pick to pass on guys like Jamal Adams. To pass on guys like Patrick Mahomes. To pass on guys like Deshaun Watson for Mitchell Trubisky. Now, Mitchell Trubisky is a quarterback that has a good win percentage so far in his career. But the narrative around Mitchell Trubisky is a skewed narrative. It is a narrative that he is a bust, which is very false. Very false. A winning quarterback is not a bust. A serviceable quarterback is not a bust. You missed out on Patrick Mahomes. Did you really miss out on Patrick Mahomes? Or is Patrick Mahomes helped by some of his weapons? Travis Kelce, Terry Kill, Nicole Hardman, Sammy Watkins. You missed out on Deshaun Watson. Is Deshaun Watson helped by DeAndre Hopkins when he was there? By Will Fuller. And at the end of the day, Mitchell Trubisky has a better win percentage and more games won than Deshaun Watson. So is Mitchell Trubisky a bust? No, he's not. Now the narrative going around is Trubisky's not the guy. He's not the guy. Which is interesting because there's been one team in the past four weeks that have put up 30 points in each of the last four weeks. It wasn't the Chiefs. It wasn't the Ravens. It wasn't the Packers. It was one of the worst offenses in the league at one point this year. One of the worst offenses under the Savior. The Savior of Chicago. The one that everybody said was going to come to Chicago and he was going to save the franchise. He was going to come in, and he was going to lead us to prominence. Nick Foles. I have no animosity towards Nick Foles. Don't get it wrong. Nick Foles, he's not the problem. The problem is the Bears fan base. The problem is the coaching. The problem is people fail to see what I see in Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Trubisky got benched in the second half. Of the Falcons game. After throwing one interception. After going 2-0. and And having comeback wins those two weeks. Nick Foles came back to beat the Falcons. Who's just saying Mitchell Trubisky would have done the same thing. Against a poor Falcons team. That has been known to blow leads. Then. We struggle. We're a team that's. If we're going to win a game. It's probably going to be 17-13. Somewhere around those lines. Our team that didn't even score an offensive touchdown against the Vikings. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Nick Foles gets hurt. And he isn't going to be the starting quarterback for the next game. It's a game against the Packers. Mitch's big game back is against the best team in the NFC. One of the best teams in the NFC. We put up 26 points. They put up 42. Two possession game. Was it poor? Did we get a lot of late points? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he put up 26 points, which is something that we haven't done all year. And then things struck. Mitch was back. Mitch was there. He put up 30-something points against the Lions. We did lose. He fumbled. I think it was a bad play call, but he fumbled. And we lost. A game we should have won. If we won that game, we'd already been in the playoffs. But he lost. We lost. Moved on. And now we're sitting at 500. A team that's lost six in a row. There seems to be no shot. No chance for the Bears to make the playoffs. Little to no chance. And Mitchell Trubisky, the quarterback that can't do it. 
goes four straight weeks where he puts up 30 plus. Now, I don't want to hear about the narrative of that's one of the worst defenses. Yeah, the one the one of the worst defenses. The Vikings are one of the worst defenses. They gave up zero touchdowns to the Bears offense. Zero touchdowns the first time. Shut up. Nobody asked. Mitch Trubisky, he did it. He got us back to where we need to be. And now, it's the biggest game in Mitch's career. I've been by my quarterback because, unlike a lot of the people in our fan base, I am loyal to my players. And now, we're one game out. We win, we're in. We win. Not only does the Bears make the playoffs, Trubisky probably gets another year on his contract. If we win, Trubisky proves everybody wrong. And now, if we win, we're looking at the playoffs. And we'd be a team that's won five in a row. We'd be a team ready for some some, some fire. We'd be, we'd be a team ready. We'd be ready for the victories. We're ready. But the problem is, going into this, we have the Green Bay Packers. This is a game that we need to win. It will be our fourth game in a row that we win. And then we'll be going in the wild card, which will hopefully be the fifth game. Probably have to play the team like the Saints. Doesn't matter. If we beat the Packers, we will beat whomever we have to play in the wild card. This team has something special with Mitch Trubisky, that quarterback. They do. This team will make it. And if and when we make it to the Super Bowl, which is becoming more of a possibility each day we watch this team. When we make the playoffs and when Mitch Trubisky is there and he proves himself, I don't want to hear a single soul ever question him again. The quarterback that puts your team, the one that you guys are supposedly so knowledgeable of, the quarterback that put Cody Parkey in a position to win the playoff game, that guy is back. The quarterback that was on a mission to win a Super Bowl last time he was in the playoffs is back. Mr. Trubisky is playing his best football. And I don't care what analyst you listen to. I read something today about whether or not you want to revive his career or not. He's still not doing this and this and this. Shut up. He's winning football games. The only stat I care about is winning football games. You want to sit there and make all these statistics. Oh, he's 26th in this. He's 36th in this. Nobody cares. Aaron Rodgers has a less yards per attempt than Mitchell Trubisky through the air. He throws shorter passes and he has rack yards. Nobody asked you to give your little insight, sir. The Bears are winning games. They're not winning them with the Saint Nick. They're not winning them with the Savior. They're winning them with the guy they had on roster. They're winning them with the guy that I said was going to be the guy. Look at that. Look at that. Somebody that knows it. Been saying it since the beginning of the year. Everything I've said about this team has been true. Look at our receivers. Do we have Allen Robinson as a number one receiver? Absolutely. But we're struggling to find a third receiver. Miller hasn't been that great. We haven't really got him going. Could have used one. Offensive line. We struggled to figure out a starting lineup for most of the season. We've just recently found out that Sam Mustafer is really good. And he's been on roster the entire year. We just figured that out. This team is playing its best football. Whether it's Mitch, whether it's Khalil, whether it's Eddie, whether it's Kyle, whether it's Jalen, whether it's Data Montgomery. Everybody on this team is playing their best football. 
The only thing that can hold this team back now is the coach. This team has all the potential in the world to be in the Super Bowl, to have that matchup that everybody's going to love. You you want to you want to play the narratives. You want to play the narratives, right? Give them the narratives. Chicago, give them the narrative. Let them run with it. Let them talk about it. Let them shit on us going into the Super Bowl. We win. We're going into the playoffs scorching hot. We're going into the playoffs with bright eyes, big eyes. We're going in there with our eyes set on that prize. We, we, we feel that pain from what Cody Parkey did to our organization. When we make it back, we will be right where we belong, holding up the Lombardi Trophy with Mitchell Trubisky as the guy. And then they can sit there and play their narratives. Oh, this one doesn't count. It's the COVID year. Oh, this one doesn't count. People opted out. Guess what? Eddie Goldman opted out. I didn't see a single person on Chicago crying about it. We're going to be contenders this year. We're going to win this Green Bay game. Whether I have to talk myself into it or whether it actually happens, we are winning this game. I have the utmost confidence in my guys. We are winning this football game. We're going to continue to win football games throughout January. And we're going to be playing in front of the whole world on the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes. Then you can play your narratives. Holmes, Trubisky. You got your guys. The two quarterbacks that everybody loves to spread narratives about. I can't believe they passed on Mahomes. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait. You know why I can't wait? Because I can play everything back you've ever said. I can run it on rewind. Everything that's ever been said about Mitchell Trubisky. I love Stephen A. Smith, but Stephen A. Smith, the Chicago Bears not only passed on Patrick Mahomes, not only passed on Deshaun Watson, but they gave up two first-round picks to trade up for this guy. Max Kellerman, you're not going to get the job done. And St. Nick's going to have to come on in, and he's going to have to save yet another franchise. I can't wait. can't wait to use those the day we win the Super Bowl. Because you know how great it's going to feel after being doubted for the last three years? After being questioned... Not only about Mitchell Trubisky, not only of hearing these narratives, not only of that, but I've been a big Mitch supporter. You know how great it's going to feel when Trubisky beats Mahomes in the Super Bowl? You know how great it's going to feel? It's going to feel fucking fantastic. Green Bay's this week. Quite arguably the biggest game of Mitch's career. You gotta win this game to keep going. Each game from this point on is Mitch's biggest game of his career. Forget the Eagles game. Cody Parkey ruined that. That doesn't even count. This is the biggest game of Mitch's career. This is the biggest game of Khalil's career. This is the biggest game of Eddie Jackson's career. This is the biggest game of David Montgomery's career. This is the biggest game of Kyra Santos's career. Cordero Patterson. The list goes on. Bilal Nichols. Everybody. This is the biggest game of Matt Nagy's career. This name or biggest game of Chuck Pagano's career. Everybody. Everybody. On Sunday, 425 Eastern Standard. We're going to be in front of everybody. We're going to be one of the last games. We're going to know, hey, we got to win to be in. We're not relying on the Rams to beat the to beat the Cardinals. We're not doing that. It's not our job. Our job's to win. And that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. Bear down, boys. No need to fear. 
We're going to win this game. If it's the last thing we do. We're winning against the Packers. Aaron Rodgers. He ain't doing that again. He ain't doing that again. He ain't putting 40 on us again. We're different. We're the best we've ever played. Mitchell Trubisky is the guy. Bear down. Trust in our guy. And we're going to win this football game.